Hello everyone, my name is Rafal and I would like to welcome you to my YouTube channel. I know I was absent for quite some time, but it's New Year and I promised myself that I'm going to put a little bit more effort into making those videos. I know they're extremely valuable for some of my viewers, so I'm really sorry I didn't create them for a long time, but I'm back in the business and I'm going to do my best to put as many as possible. So today's video, I would like to talk a little bit about phase expressions. In my opinion, phase expressions are one of the most important elements of headshot photography. And I know from my experience and from seeing what other photographers do, sometimes phase expressions are kind of neglected and we focus way too much on the lighting, on the settings, on the gear we use, but phase expressions are put to the side and we don't really know how to approach them, how to deal with some of those phase expressions and how to get those which are going to benefit our subjects and our clients. So today we're going to go through several phase expressions which are common for most of my headshot sessions and I'm going to show you the ones which we don't want to get and how to deal with those type of phase expressions. And I'm going to also show you the ones which I admire and those ones which I want to get throughout every headshot session. So there's several of them and let's go through them step by step. Let's start with the first phase expression, which are very common. And those are the ones which we don't want to get because they're not going to benefit our client and they just simply don't send the right message to the viewer whoever's going to be looking at that headshot it's going to get this mixed up feeling and it's simply not good for this type of work so i'm talking about the surprised look and typically that look comes at the beginning on every headshot session when the client is stressed out, it's nervous, there is a lot of light around, there is a photographer with the big camera, and they simply stressed out. So usually what happens, they have eyes wide open, they look like the saw a ghost or something which scares them. And this is not showing their confidence and they're not showing the right emotion for the shot. So what I'm trying to do in those type of situations, I'm trying to calm my subject down. And usually I'm jump into some conversation, try to explain to them what I'm doing and try to make them feel a little bit more confident. And that's the best way to kind of avoid this look. And when you see that your client kind of creates that type of face expressions, you have to typically take a little bit of time off, a little bit of break, and try to calm the person down and make them feel a little bit more confident about the environment they're in and what you're trying to achieve and what you're trying to do. The next phase expression, which we don't wanna get, we're gonna talk about emotional less look. So this is the look where the client is looking at the camera and they're there, but they emotionally not engage with you. And typically what happens is they, they just pretty much just stare at you. That's what usually what happens. There's no emotions in their face. They also look a little bit scared, a little bit terrified, but we also have to avoid this type of look because it's not sending the right message to whoever's gonna be looking at that image. And typically that happens again at the beginning of the every session when the client is a little bit stressed out and they try to somehow hide their emotions and hide what they feel. So we again have to have a little conversation, try to jump into some more positive topics and try to make your client feel a little bit more confident about what you're doing and try to pull out some emotions from the subject. The next look, which is also extremely common, is the angry look. And that might cause a lot of different things. Client is trying too hard. And as you see, he's doing this like crazy squint. Also, the muscles on the face getting extremely tense. So you have to be extremely careful with that. Sometimes people naturally do that. Sometimes also the stressful situation of the photo shoot makes them push that face expression. And also I've noticed sometimes I'm running into the situations where my clients, they have some 
problems and they don't have to be necessarily related to the photo shoot but they have some bad day they're angry about something and their body just simply showcasing what they feel so again in this case we need to relax our subject we need to jump into some positive conversation and we have to try to make sure that the client tension is is kind of going away or we can kind of fade it out so the face doesn't showcasing the anger in their face the next one this one is really big and um, something which we all have to fight is the fake smile this is something which the clients typically they try to smile but they don't want to or they don't know how to do it or they just force themselves and that's what happens when they try to smile they don't want to do it or they're forcing themselves and they create this fake smile so this is something we have to avoid this is something that we need to be extremely careful and i think the worst thing what can happen is when we tell to our client please smile that's what caused this problem and that's what caused that clients they faking their smile so the best way to avoid that is pretty much just don't tell them please smile just don't use that word at all typically what i'm trying to do is trying to direct my client into some kind of situations which put them smile so typically i'm trying to jump into topics of our conversation where the client kind of naturally smiles and i will show you in a second how that kind of smile look like when they smile naturally so avoid telling the client to smile try to talk about something which is going to put the smile on your client face the next one is the sleepy look this is something which i always have to fight sometimes where the client comes in and is tired and they are at the session but they don't want to be there and they just they do this like really weird face expression where the eyes are kind of half closed they look at you but they don't want to look at you uh, and they avoiding engage with you and your camera and again it's a little bit emotional less face expressions as well but they look like they're extremely tired and they just forcing themselves to look at you and that's how you get this face expression the next one is a macho look this is something also especially with the male subject with female this is a little bit different but with the male you're getting this i would say face expressions which they trying to kind of showcase how strong they are how confident but they pushing way too much and typically the way i see it they do this little weird squint and they push their chin up they're trying to kind of take it over the engagement and they try to project how strong they are and and this is how this whole thing look like on the face expression and as you probably can see in this example, that's when you can see that this is way too much. And I think this is also not a really good look for the male headshot because whoever's gonna be looking at those images, and it also depends on what kind of position they are in and what this headshot will be used for. Um, sometimes it's, again, sending not the right message to whoever's going to be looking at that image so you have to be extremely careful you have to analyze it if you see that your client is doing this typically what i'm trying to do is relax them talk to them change the topic try to take their mindset from that way of thinking and usually that works and you can get into some different face expressions which is going to fit them a little bit better the next one is too much squint so we definitely are looking for get a little bit of squint in our headshots a little bit of squint is good because what it does it showcases the confidence of your subject but when it's too much it simply looks weird and it's not good for the headshot face expression and you have to be extremely careful i know again if you start pushing your clients to let's squint more let's squint more that's usually what happens they they, they typically overdo it and that's how this whole thing look like so typically what i'm trying to do in those type of cases i'm asking my subject to look through the lens like there is something interesting on the other side and that's how they focused they get engaged but they don't over squint but if you tell them straightforward please squint your eyes typically that's what they do so avoid 
forcing them to squint there, try to make them look through the lens and try to focus on the lens. And that's how the squint comes a little bit more natural and it's not looking as obvious. The next one I want to talk about it is submissive look. So this is something and I've noticed this is a little bit more when it comes to female headshots. I found this especially when the client has really I would say low self-esteem or is scared or is terrified and they try to like hide behind themselves and that's why they push their chin down. They try to kind of look like they submit yourself to you and as you probably can see on this image, the person is really pushing the chin down, is trying to hide. And usually what I'm trying to do in this case, ask the client to push the chin up a little bit, push the arms back just to kind of showcase a little bit more confidence into the image. And that usually solves the problem. But I've noticed this on so many occasions where the client was terrified of the headshot session, it was scared about to happen and they create this really interesting look and this interesting face expressions. As I said, they try to kind of hide themselves from you. And this is how they express themselves throughout face expression. Okay, so let's jump into the final look. So this is, in my opinion, ideal smile look where the client is smiling naturally. And typically what I'm trying to do is I'm having constant conversation through the entire photo shoot and I'm trying to navigate throughout different topics and trying to find something which is going to put the smile on my subject. And when I notice that there is something interesting, something which makes my client happy and creates some emotions and creates some interesting face expressions, that's where I'm trying to put pause and try to dig more into it. And that's why when you start kind of seeing that your client lights up, put some smiles on, on their faces, and usually you have to be ready with your camera and just capture this natural smile. So this is first example. And in this case, as you notice, is a natural smile. There's some spark in the subject eyes. I don't remember we, what exactly we talk about, but I've noticed that the client kind of put natural smile, I snapped the photo and I think it's it's pretty good. Uh, those images didn't go through any retouching, so there's still some work to do on them, but I just want to show you raw files, what I'm getting straight from the camera and how the face expressions look like straight from my camera. So the next one is ideal serious look. So as you probably can see, there is quite strong engagement with the camera. So the subject is looking straight through the lens. There is a little bit of squint, not too much. The lips are stick together. And it's, I would say it's a little bit more on the extremely serious end, but this particular shoot was done for the model agency. So they want sometimes this little bit more intense look and that's why I think that was my goal with it. So he doesn't showcase some anger, but I really like uh, the seriousness of his face expression and also I really like the engagement with his eyes. So he has strong connection, he's looking for, for the camera, has a little bit more serious look. But I think in this case, it works pretty well. The chin is a little bit down, so it's not really this macho look. So there is a little bit submissive approach to it, but I think it's in the right balance where it's not too much. Okay, so that concludes this video. I hope that was interesting. The one thing what I highly advise is to analyze your images. So whenever you're done with your headshot session, please make sure go through all those images, analyze them, try to feel uh, from them and see what your feelings are when you look at specific face expression, because that usually helps to be a little bit more aware and cautious about what are we getting and how to recognize those good face expressions and those ones which are not fit for our subject and our client. Okay, thank you for watching. I hope that was interesting. And if you have any questions or concerns or you would like to add something, please feel free to reach out to me. You guys know where to find me. 
I'm available on social media. Also, you can contact me through my website. But again, thank you for watching. Stay tuned and I'll chat with you guys very soon. Bye-bye.